Hi, this is Cheryl of Majestic Wire Artworks. Uh, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make uh, my smaller version of my uh, leaf woven leaf earrings. And um, this is what they look like. And I'm using in here 20 gauge, 28 gauge. I've got um, 8 by six millimeter rondelle in the middle and these are um, six by four rondelles on the sides here you can use different um, different various beads in here you could use wider beads in the center and then trim narrow them down um, that's your choice but the length of the bead is going to determine the size of your earring. So with um, these, I actually once I start my uh, the earrings, I'm going to measure them for you so you know what that length is, and I'll put it in the description. Always check the descriptions of my videos because I have the measurements there for you and the supplies there for you. So we're going to weave here about one and a half inches but if your beads are longer you might need a little to add a little bit more I've given lots of length for the length of the 20 gauge wire um, if you're making it longer you might need a little bit more of the 28 gauge wire so you'll just have to play it by ear and see where it goes but uh, they're such beautiful earrings that you should really love this and this weave that I'm going to show you today is just stunning with these earrings as well so I really hope you enjoy this video and uh, please subscribe to my channel to support me and uh, let's begin so okay so you start with taking uh, one of your 20 gauge pieces of law wire, they're eight inches long. And I'm just, I don't know if I've showed it in any of my videos, but this one really doesn't need it. But sometimes when you take your wire off the, the roll, it hits kinks in it. And I straighten it using it in my hands. I just grab one end with my pliers and I just go like this. And see, I'm actually putting a bend in my finger like that. And you usually only need to do it once, but sometimes it depends how bad the kink is. And bend it, and then it straightens it out. And that's all you need is just your just your hands. And, uh, and my wire's straight. Okay, so you should always do that prior to working. And, and then if it's too curved for your work, then you just take a slow... A, a slow pull like that and it gets it fairly straight okay so then do do that to all your wires if they need it and uh, and then we'll get started okay now that you've got all three wires I mean six wires uh, prepped we're gonna start with three wires and so take one of your 20 gauge wires and also take um, your 28 gauge wire and we're going to start our weaving process and I'm going to show you how to do the weave for these earrings um, so I want you to measure approximately two inches from the right end of your wire and it's going to move on you so that's why I'm not worried about the measurement right now and with this weave it's easy to slide the wires back and forth to get the right measurements anyways so we're going to put we're going to lasso the three wires together, but you start with just wrapping once around like that. It needs to be fairly tight. Then you grab your next wire and introduce it underneath. And I always stagger my wires when I'm weaving because we can always slide them. If I can't slide them, then I don't. But this is easy to slide so it makes it easier to do the weave when you have um, the wires staggered that way you can visually see where the wires belong if they get twisted up on you and see did you see how I just 
wrapped I wrapped around the top one and then wrapped exactly the same way around the second one and then we're gonna do the same thing with the third one and we're gonna wrap just around that one wire and now they're all supported quite strongly so it's easy to hold them okay and I've got them staggered maybe staggered a little bit too much see how easy that was to slide okay but when all said and done we want um, this edge of the weave to be two inches in of the wire Okay, okay, there. So, I don't know if I mentioned it, but we're gonna use a permanent marker to mark on the wire in this um, tutorial. So if you don't have one with you, it might be a good idea to go get one. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're coming around the back, we came up around the back, and we're just wrapping up around the top wire like that then we're kind of coming up around the back okay we pulled it tight and then we let go so that the tension isn't strong and we're going down wrapping around the top two wires so we're coming down between the bottom two wires and we pull tight and let go and then we come up and we pull up so now we're going to go around the bottom two wires. We're going to come up between the bottom two wires. Like that. Let go. We always let go in between so we don't have too much tension. Now we're going tightly pulling up around behind all three. Then pull it tight there. Let go. And we've done one pattern. Okay. And now we're going to do another one. Just wrapping around, whoops, working through the camera. There we go. Wrap around the top one, the top two, wrap around the top two. Now we're gonna wrap around the bottom two. And now we're gonna wrap around just the bottom one. Okay, so that's two done. Let's do another one up around behind all three wrap around the top one oops pull it tight tight again let go so when we do it tight we're putting a bend in the wire so it kind of holds its place when we let go okay so another thing I wanted to mention when we wrap around that center and pull up sometimes what it does is it lifts up the center wire and then you end up with your wires not sitting level so I'm gonna finish that pattern and we're gonna I'm gonna actually use my pliers to cinch them together or compress and that's what the weave looks like. That's what the back of the weave looks like. Okay. Well, I sounds like I need to let my cat out. Huh. Seems this is this has become a ritual when I do a tutorial. He knows I want him quiet, so he asks to go outside. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that the cat's out, let's continue. So what I was saying is we've we need to um, make sure that they're not doing that. So um, I compress about every, what, five, six pat uh, patterns here. But sometimes you just need to tap. Don't squeeze hard, just tap. Just barely go like that just to get the wires flat you can um if you want to do it harder you can do it right here but sometimes that doesn't work you've actually got to go here so do it with minimal pressure if you really don't want to use these pliers to do it you can try just using your nails 
But I mean, it all depends what your nails, condition of your nails are like too. I'm not sure why we're going out of focus. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the weave one more time. So we go up behind all three, wrap around the top wire. What's silly me? There. And then I had to look over the camera there, so I probably went out of the screen. Now the top two wires. There we go. And wrap around the bottom two wires. And then the bottom wire. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So I want you to go ahead and weave one and a half inches. And then I want you to take your second three wires and repeat the process. And uh, if you have to go to the beginning of the video to see it again, to learn the weave again, that's okay. It's uh, your time and I'm hoping everything works for you. Okay, so I'm uh, gonna be right back with all my weaving done so I don't waste your time. Okay, so I have all my weaving done and it's such a beautiful weave. I love this weave, isn't it gorgeous? And the back, is different but it's gorgeous too so for some pieces if you if you want to use this in a different piece the back is just fantastic to use because if you look back here see it's got the three individual wraps in the middle and then a solid one and it, it's interchanging that and it's got such texture and interest and it just all oh, for um, my pendants where I do the weave around um, like I did for the BB craft videos uh, video that I did I'm, I'm not happy with that video because it I was having so many technical difficulties but but this would be a great weave to to use in that tutorial too um, that's what's really nice about weaving is you can totally change the look of a design just be changing up your weave so Anyways, the next thing to do is we're going to trim off. You're going to have extra length here. Now, I'm telling you, asking you to use a three and a half foot piece of 28 gauge. Um, if you're making a bigger earring, you're going to need a little bit more. Go four feet. But you could also do this. You could, if you're using sterling silver and you want to um, not use so much, you can, instead of you cutting two pieces of wire, you could um, cut one long piece of wire. I always give myself an extra half a foot of working length. So we're actually using three feet of wire um, to make this and then the extra half foot is just working wire. So, um, if you want to do it one length, then you don't need two, three and a half pieces. You would just need one six and a half piece. So that saves you six inches of sterling silver wire. And, uh, but I mean, 28 gauge of sterling silver isn't that expensive. So you might not, it depends how good you are with the wire. Some people break their wire because they're hard on it. So that's why I give two lengths. So. It all depends on how proficient you are. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim off that extra tail to um, half an inch. It's all it is for. All we're doing it for is just to get it out of our way. Okay. And when we're working the piece, we're actually um, going to be cutting off this end. I don't know if we'll have enough room um, to... We might have to cut that further later. I don't know. It's with my other one. I did have to, but okay. And then the next thing, I don't want to cut this one off yet because otherwise we'll end up poking ourselves. So just the two little tails like that. Um, and I never showed you before how easy it is to move the wire. So to adjust the length 
it's quite easy. See how easy that was? You just grab it with the plier and pull. And uh, now I'm going to pull it back. So, or right here. I'm going to even see if I pull it with my fingers. Nope. Okay, so I'm just pulling it back. There we go. And it's back. So that was quite simple. Now, with these earrings, you are going to need one sitting this way with the weave on the left and the other one with the weave on the right to work with. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, the weave on the left. There we go. And so the first thing we got to do is we need to pull up that center wire and we're going to make it like that perpendicular. Okay, and now I've got that kink from straightening the wire. I am just going to straighten that. That's going to end up being cut off. So you can, it doesn't matter if you mar the wire, but you just need it straight to put the beads on. So first we're going to put two six by four rondelles. And then your eight by six rondelle. And then two more. Six by four. Okay. Now, this is called green colorized. They're my favorite, my most favorite color of rondelles. It's so pretty. Now, I promised I would measure that for you. So let's do that right now. I mean, yours doesn't have to be exact. So I always measure in uh, millimeters and centimeters because we can do finer measurements. So that works out to about approximately 24 millimeters. Okay. So if you want to use different type of beads, that's about the length I'm using. Uh, I wouldn't want to do, you can do a little bit more. Remember, if you're doing it longer, um, you're going to need more weaving and you're going to need a longer weaving wire. So you're just going to have to play and uh, I'm going to go from there. So the next step, we don't want to bend any of this yet, is we are going to measure seven millimeters from the top of your bead. And that's how much work room we want to put wrap the weave around and then wrap this wire around and you can see it here it's quite long okay so i'm going to start it off we want it wrapped quite neatly that's very hard for me to do on the camera so i'm just going to do one or two wraps just to show you the technique and then i'm going to turn off the camera and actually finish it off um, off camera so i'm not fighting with the camera to make it neat and uh, i'm sure you understand the process. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to take your permanent marker and your ruler. Now, I have a permanent marker that's got double edges. One's really tiny, and that's the one I prefer to do. Okay, so you got to hold your bead. And again, this is difficult for me to do behind the camera. Okay. And then you want to bend that exactly on that mark. And that's where you're going to make your loop for your ear wire. the lid back on my marker. Sorry about the blue screen, but had some people comment on my blue screen and they thought I should work further away from the camera so that I never had a blue screen. But, you know, 
I'd rather you see it. It's gonna you're gonna have it when I'm grabbing stuff and things like that. And you just need to be patient with me. It, it, honestly, it doesn't take away from the quality of my video. Okay, so now you need your round nose pliers. And take your favorite ear wire size of loop or earring I should say and remember we want to use exactly the same size on both earrings so we've bent it and now we're pulling it around to the front and you adjust your pliers so that you can go underneath now okay and the next step is to take your pliers out make sure it's a nice level wrap Okay, what I mean by that is that it's not to the side, and if it is, this one's perfect, but if it is, then you would put this, and you would use this bottom plier to put pressure and pull the loop over. Okay, and um, I'm sure it's going to bend on us, and we're going to have to adjust, and I just bent it like that, and I didn't want to. Now, I'm going to take... My chain, you could put your round nose pliers back in, but I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers and hold it like that steady and then just wrap the top loop. And I want it nice and neat. Okay, so to make it neat, you're having tension up this way a little bit so it snugs up to the next wrap. And you're going to do that so you want it nice and neat and they're all so that you don't have to cinch them up but if they aren't you can always with your pliers squish them together and make them nice and neat so I'm going off camera to finish it off and then I want you to do the exact same thing well I'll get you started I'll be back and get you started with the next one so hang on okay I've got the wrapping done I've got it fairly neat you want a little bit of play space in here, not so you don't want to wrap totally right up to the bead because then we could end up breaking a bead. So I've got it. This is the front. I've got it there. I'm going to snip it fairly close, as you know, close as you can. Not exactly there, but a little bit of length. Snipping's always fun through the camera. So one of my coming up videos is going to be an opening from my BB Craft people and I've ordered some pliers that I'm hoping are, are because I get so many questions what tools do you use and you know I've had these tools since I started wire wrapping they're the same ones and the fellow I bought them all my tools from is no longer in business. So I can't even direct you to where I got my tools from because I bought them online. And um, so I'm hoping that these new tools from BB Craft will be, you know, the fine tips nicely. This is the features you look for where it's nice and smooth in here so it doesn't mar your wire. Um, you want it nice fine tips on especially your chain nose pliers and uh, it just does nicer finish work so and I like stainless steel I don't think they're stainless steel though um, but the, with review you'll you'll see and then if I like them I'm gonna start using them in all my videos and I will mention um, where I got them so that I don't have to answer those questions anymore they're answered each and every time okay so there you are now, with the second one, um, where'd it go? Okay. Okay, I got the second one. Um, we had, with the first one, we had the weaving to the left. This one, we want the weaving to the right, and that's going to mirror our earrings. And now, we're going to take the top wire and bend it perpendicular again. And then, other than that, we're doing the exact same thing. You're going to put on your beads, measure your 7 millimeters, bend it, do your loop, 
and your wrap. Okay, and I'm going to go do that off screen. Okay, so I'm back with the second one, mostly done. So I'm just going to show you some finishing techniques because I have a bit of a split here and I can demonstrate. So you're going to try and cinch it together with the pliers carefully. It's that I just squished it together. And then I want you to crimp in the bottom wire like that on both. Um, not that it's going to poke anything. That's just the technique. Now, see how the top bent on me when I was wrapping? We're just going to straighten that out. And we want it facing the front. Okay. There you go. Okay, we've got some playroom in there. That's good. Okay, so at this point, I think we can trim off this tail totally on um, the by the bottom of the beads. And we want to do it at the top, not the back, because we're going to put a swirl over top of that. Okay, we don't need to worry about crimping it in because the swirl will be over top. And then I'm going to do the same thing with uh, my other one. So we want both done. There. Okay. So I'm setting aside my the one with the weaving on the right and starting with the weaving on the left. So we are going to okay, keep this perpendicular. We're going to curve this. Well, actually, we're going to curve this too. They both have to curve. So remember, we're trying to make the shape of a leaf. So we want the bottom to be wider and the top to be narrower. See, like this. So it actually looks like it didn't go, well, we're meeting to the point, right? Okay. So you want it to look like that, and you might have to straighten out your weave if it starts curling on you, and that's that's okay. And then, see, we got it at the top of the bead, and it's at an angle, so that's okay. That's why we got the length here, and we're going to, I'm supporting it here, and I'm pushing it around like this. Okay, so it looks like that. And now I'm going to trim that in like this. Oh, I would have wanted it just a smidge longer, actually. My judgment behind the camera was a little off. But I'm going to work it the best I can, and then I'm going to hug it around very carefully because you can distort the weave so very gently and carefully tuck that in if I had a little bit more length I could have just pulled it so give yourself a little bit more length but it's still good it's still okay it's still staying firm okay so that's good and then that's that's the part like that that you want to do and now I recommend that um, no, I'm, I was going to say, do the other one like that. No, let's finish this earring and then we will compare the two uh, as we work with the other one. The first one's always easier. And you see how um, you'll have to adjust this as this is so curved. This is curved too. We're going to wiggle it upwards. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm just straightening this. And then we're going to finish. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that right now. What am I thinking? Okay, so because we, we want it to be upright. See? There. That's all it took. Now, with this, we're going to do a swirl at the base. And if you, if you look at the other one, see what that swirl does? And we don't want it flat. We, we want it to come out a little bit. 
So that's what it naturally will do. And then most people want to flatten it right away. So I'm just showing you that we don't want to flatten it because it gives dimension. It gives interest and dimension. It looks better from the side and from the front. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So I am holding this, supporting it. I've got my finger to do the swirl. This is called finger swirling. And I'm turning the piece with this and still supporting and making a little swirl like this. Okay, and we want it to stop about there. Okay, because we want that angle. Okay, and now go further out with your hands here and we're gonna bend it around. And you sometimes have to put a little bit of pressure to get the curve you desire to make the leaf and you wanna do it. So I'm finding this a little bit too big, so I'm gonna pull it up. And I'm actually going to bend this out a little bit more. Okay. Does that look better? Every pair is going to be different. This pair, I actually have it curved out a little bit more that way, this way. So I'm going to, I want this a little bit more out too. So try not to kink the wire. You got to move slow and gentle and patient. How does that look? I think that looks nice. Now, you might have noticed that the other two, the wires split apart. Don't worry about that now. That's the next step. So, I'm going to, I like that look. It looks good. And now I'm going to hold it firmly in place here so it doesn't get distorted and wrap around the base. Okay, so that's what it looked like and then we're going to trim it not too short because we want it to tuck under and meet up with that other wire there so we don't have sharp edges so I'm peeking over my camera I'm gonna snip it there hopefully it's not too long either I'm going to hold this to support it. I don't want to distort it. Oh, come on. I'm going to peek over the camera again. There. No sharp edges. Push it down if you want to, to tuck it in. Again, supporting this so we don't distort it. Just taking the tips and pushing it down. There, I'm happy with that. Okay, so then the next step is to put your nail in here, very gently in the middle and just spread it apart like that and it's done that one's done okay so gotta pause this and grab the other one okay so you grab your other ear earring and uh we're going to keep this earring handy but upside down because we're going to mimic the shape um, by comparing it, well, it's upside down because then it's the same. So I'm just going to set it down there. And we started with curving these beads. So about the same curve. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. And then we're going to curve gently now remember that if you curve and you get a kink you just bend it back because with a weave um, the physics of it is you have all these wires working together and it's easy to unkink if you just 
put the pressure the right way and it will readjust because you've got wires pulling from all directions. So I don't want it too tight at the bottom. But I do want it the same as the other earring. So let's just compare. That's pretty close. Okay, I think that's pretty close. And then once we get it wrapped around, if it's still a little bit off, I mean, a little bit's okay, but we can do uh, minor adjustments. So I've been supporting this with my thumb and I'm wrapping it around. Might be a little bit bigger, I'm not sure. Okay, so we're gonna support, compare these two. And it is, see how this is off? I made it a little bit bigger. And I could tell that because of where the weaving ended because these are exactly one and a half inches in weaving. So I'm going to unbend this and we bend it a little bit tighter. Let's see if that makes a difference. There we go. Now we're a match. Okay, so that's it's um yours might not go as quick as that, but that's what we want. Okay, now we're going to snip it off, giving it a little bit more length this time. So I'm actually going to go past the weave. So I'm going to tuck this weave in the weaving wire in the back so it's hidden ahead of time. So we don't have to worry about snipping and crimping. Ooh, peek over the camera. Okay. Depth of field isn't there when you're all behind the camera. Okay, and now I'm gonna give a little bit more length. Snip. I held the end so they didn't go flying. Grab that end. Bend and tuck. Push those in just a tiny bit more. One at a time. There. Now, that's the way I like it. Perfect. Okay. So this time, we're going with a swirl going this way. Okay, so I'm holding it upside down. It's a clockwise swirl. Okay, and now we want to have it, well, gotta hold it backwards. The same angles. And this is going to be awkward to do on camera. 